Hi everyone and welcome to a special edition of Classic Gamer 74. I'm your host Anthony Ventrillo and I'm Humphrey the Wolf and today is a FAQ episode where I'm going to answer some of the questions that have been submitted by some of our loyal viewers and friends and subscribers. Um, I get quite a few questions from different people and um, I don't always get a chance to answer them in the comments section. So I'm going to take this opportunity to answer some of the questions I've received. I mean, there's been quite a few, but I'm going to narrow it down to pretty much these main 20. So you ready to get started? Oh yes, let's begin. All right, question number one, why the puppets? Well, um, I wanted to do something that set me apart from some of the other YouTube channels. I mean, if you know, haven't noticed, there's quite a few uh, video game channels out there. Oh yes, quite a few. Um, however, some of them aren't what I would call family friendly, as much as I really don't like that term. Um, what I wanted to do with my channel was make it so that entire families could watch it. I mean, grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, grandkids, you know, whoever. So, um, like, for instance, grandkids come over and, you know, grandpa's an old school gamer like me. Eh, yes, you're quite a grandpa. Quiet. And, for instance, he wants to uh, share some of his old Atari games uh, with the grandkids. Well, here's an opportunity. I mean, he can say, well, you know, when I was young, you know, I used to play these games. Check them out. And so, you know, I want families to feel safe, you know, watching my channel and not have to worry about there being profanity, sexual references, or things like that, uh, which is, those things are never going to be in my channel, so, um, and also the puppets give me a chance to show off, you know, some of the voices I can do, is I can do different accents, sound effects, voices, you know, and it's just a lot of fun, you know, I have a blast doing this, and, you know, uh, them being here helps me quite a bit, so, um, um, I hope that kind of, uh, answers your question. I know that's come up a couple times from a few different people, so that's basically it. Oh yes, and besides, we add a different uh, level of fun to the channel. Yeah, I totally agree with that. By the way, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Oh yes, I actually went out on a date. Really? Oh yes. Not with your mother? <laughs> that's not funny. Oh, sorry. Really? You have a girlfriend? Oh yes. Uh, what's her name? Virginia. Virginia Woolf. Yes. Oh, boy, I didn't see that coming. All right, question number two. Why was McDonald's the subject of your first video? All right, now, any old school gamer uh, that, you know, was big into Atari games in the early 80s remembers that when you would buy a game, uh, it always came with a lot of cool extras. I mean, you had catalogs. Uh, sometimes you had... Um, you know questionnaires and you know warranty of all that other stuff but uh, Parker Brothers always had their catalog that came with the games and you know of course you'd go through the catalog and see what other games were available and of course what games were coming soon and one of the games that was spoken of in that catalog was the McDonald's game now growing up in the late 70s and early 80s, I was a McDonald's kid. Um, not only that, I loved uh, Ronald McDonald and the McDonaldland gang, and I mean, the commercials were on all the time, especially during Saturday morning cartoons, and I just thought it was really cool. Like, hey, they're making a game about Ronald McDonald and his friends, and you know, I was excited, and, and then, of course, I was unaware of the video game crash, because uh, I was so young. But then, you know, the game just never seemed to see the light of day. I uh, contacted Parker Brothers, and they said, oh, we shut down our video game division. It never got finished. Thank you for calling, blah, 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 click. And um, so that was the last I heard of it um, until, you know, a few years ago, I started getting back into old school gaming. And I always wondered, you know, what happened to, you know, the McDonald's game, you know, because... Um, you know, it wasn't much of a screenshot if you've seen the uh, advertisement in the catalog, but it was still, you know, I mean, you had the big, you know, arches and and um, 
then I discovered AtariAge.com, and they showed the, um, uh, the, you know, they had the little, the thing that was available was just that big M, and then they said that, well, that was it. That was, you know, all there was. And, and then other prototypes started to come to life. Uh, you know, you'll see the light of day in, you know, I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. Well, um, when I finally got, when I got inspired to do this pay channel, I found out that the game did surface, you know, um, it wasn't on the Atari 2600, it was actually on the Atari 8, and I said, wow, that's great, you know, I, I was just so excited because, you know, I had always wondered for like almost 30 years, what happened to this game, you know, did they start it, I mean, was it finished, and the answer was yes, so, um, you know, I had been waiting 30 years to see the game, and then when I found out it was actually completed, and it was, you know, the prototype was available, I just pretty much decided, okay, that's going to be my first episode. And so that was it. Oh, yes, that was a fun game, wasn't it? Oh, it actually is. It's it's a lot of fun. I mean, um, it's too bad with the crash. I mean, it, it, there's a good chance that, you know, I think people would have enjoyed it. And so far, a lot of people have uh, really liked the prototype. I mean, it's playable. It's fun. It's challenging. It's, it's a great game. It's everything I thought it would be and some. All right, let's continue. Oh, oh, hey. Hey, what's going on? It's me, Larry. Larry the Lion. Yeah, I think everyone knows who you are by now. Oh, yeah, I just want to make sure. <laughs> All right, uh, question number three. All-time favorite video game system. Um, All right, I'm just going to come out and say, yeah, uh, Atari 2600. Yeah, that was, like, really hard. Yeah, uh, Atari 2600, definitely. Um, stands the test of time. I still play the games love it love them love the games i mean you know obviously you look at the games on my channel and it's gonna go long ways there i mean i'll never run out of stuff because new games are being dis you know prototypes are being discovered all the time uh there's a bunch of homebrews coming out and hacks and there's plenty of old games so um yeah i mean atari is it atari 2600 was is and always will be the uh the measuring stick for all um, game systems. All right, now question number four: least favorite video game system. Oh, that's easy. I would say definitely the Atari Fifty Two Hundred. Uh, a lot of hype behind it, and um, it just is a really bad system. I mean, yeah, the graphics improved, you know, from the Twenty Six Hundred in a lot of ways. But, you know, the the game system is flawed. I mean, the controllers are junk. Um, it's really actually hard nowadays to find a 5200 that's still working. Um, didn't make a lot of games for it, too. And then, plus, one of the biggest flaws they made was they made the cartridges too big so that you couldn't play the 2600 games on the 5200, uh, which is something they learned that lesson when they created the 7800. You know, because then you had games that were exclusive to the 7800, and you could play the old 2600 games on there. Well, except for, uh, it was really hard to play Star Master. Oh yeah, it was. That, that's true. I, I remember when I got the 7800, I tried playing Star Master, and it didn't work. So yeah, to answer the question, the 5200 is my least favorite. Right, question number five. Favorite video game. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, just picking one. Um, okay, let me. I'll let me reiterate. Let me change this a little. Let me modify this. How about my favorite game from my favorite systems? Well, I'd say that's a little better. All right, so the twenty six hundred. Oh, I'd have to say probably Pitfall. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. So Pitfall for the twenty six hundred. Uh, for the seventy eight hundred. Uh, food fight, definitely. Um, for the NES, River City Ransom, um, Super NES, I really like Super Punch-Out, but I also liked Legends of the Ring, I think it was called, the, bo the boxing one, that, that was one of my favorites, um, and for the Sega Genesis, I would probably have to say, um, uh, the Paperboy ported games were a lot of fun, but there were so many good games for the uh, Sega Genesis, too. Uh, it's really hard to pick, 
even for my favorite systems, it's really hard because there's other games that, you know, I really, really love that, you know, I don't want to forget about. So, yeah, it's a hard question, but I, I get that one a lot. All right, question number six, least favorite video game. Uh, that's pretty easy. Um, I would definitely have to say basic programming for the Atari 2600. I really don't even know why they made that game. And honestly, I've only ever seen one person online that actually could figure out how to play it. And it really wasn't even a game. It was just, you know, I believe Atari came up with it to show that it was actually a, a computer or something like that. So, um, yeah, I, I really, that, that definitely was not a game. I actually owned it at one time. I got it at a yard sale with the controllers, and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I didn't have the book, which was a typical back in those days. A lot of times when you would buy video games, you know, Atari games at a yard sale, none of them came with the instruction manual. And unless it was a space shooter, you know, or a very old game, you needed the instructions. Um, but even with the instructions, I really don't think that basic programming was, uh, I don't even want to call it a game, just a cartridge I did not enjoy, so. Okay, next question. Hey, oh, what's going on? Hey, nice to see everyone there. You know who I am, I'm Ali Gator. Um, okay, so next question. Do you miss arcades? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, uh, growing up, there was always an arcade somewhere around, um, you know, Aladdin's Castle at the South Lake Mall. That was a great place to go. Oh, yeah. All right, next one. Number 10. Do you think there are more prototypes out there that haven't been discovered yet? Oh, for sure. Um, they're getting discovered all the time. Like, archaeology was just discovered, and that game was like 30-some years old, and... Um, so, oh yeah, stuff is being discovered all the time. Um, you never know where things are going to pop up. I mean, some prototypes of cartridge prototypes have, you know, the cart in cartridge form have popped up at uh, swap meets, yard sales, uh, you know, uh, pawn shops. So, I mean, you never know. I mean, not all the games were advertised that, you know, were advertised. Like for instance. Um, I mean, somewhere out there may be that 9 to 5 game that may be out there somewhere. Uh, the Incredible Hulk uh, that was spoken of in the same Parker Brothers catalog that McDonald's was, it may be out there. I mean, there's a screenshot of it. You know, I don't know if, you know, it's whether that's as far as they got or whether the, the prototype was actually finished and, you know, it's just out there somewhere. Um, also,. You know, I mean, there's several that I could list. And then, you know, you have some prototypes that have uh, materialized that were, that were just, like, the first screen, and that was it. Like, that, that Grape Smasher game I remember in Pompeii. And, of course, you know, uh, the Charlie Brown game, which, you know, at least, you know, you can do a little bit. You can just you know, put the kite up in the air. But, you know, I mean, so who knows? You know, these things just seem to pop up all the time. The programmers may have the ROMs on their own computers somewhere and eventually release them, you know, like uh, like the gentleman did with archaeology. So, I, oh, I believe definitely that there are several prototypes uh, of unreleased games out there, and as time goes on, more and more of them will pop up in some way, shape, or form. Oh, hello, Red. Hello there. Okay, um, next one. Here we are. Are you going to discuss more old school PC games? Oh, definitely. Um, I got episodes coming up that are just dedicated to abandonware. One of the problems with uh, old PC games is that, you know, there's so many of them. And some of them are just, a lot of them are fun, but then others, of the, you know, but then they can be explained in like five minutes. Um, like for instance, a good example would be like Capture the Flag or Banner Catch. That can be kind of explained real easily. I mean, like in five ten minutes, I can show a couple clips and that's it. But then you have a game like like the Three Stooges that there's just a whole lot to it, and then it, it'll pretty much need a whole episode dedicated to it to explain everything. So, uh, and like I said, there's just so many. There's so many great PC games. I mean, and computer games. Um, you know. After the video game crash, you know, the home consoles kind of, you know, went, <clears throat> but then you had just a big influx of great computer games. I mean, there were so many, and so many that are still playable today, you know, that I still enjoy playing. 
you know, a lot of people love Zork. I mean, you know, it was nothing but text, but, you know, I mean, you, you just got, you could think, you know, you could just imagine, you know, you're reading and, you know, it, you just can imagine this stuff. And a really, another really good example is uh, Death in the Caribbean. Oh, I love that game. Oh, yeah, it's great. I just finally beat it a couple months ago, and I've been playing that game on and off for 30 years. Um, it's, it's great, and there's going to be a whole episode dedicated to just that game. Uh, so yes, there's going to be plenty of PC games coming. I think the cutoff for PC games is going to probably be Half-Life. Um, you know, when I do, I get into, I'll get into a, a unit on um, first-person shooters, and Half-Life was kind of, I think, the last. I mean, the the last of the great, or the start of the great. You know, whatever you want to say. Call. I'd say that of all the first-person shooters. From back in the day, Half Life was the best. I mean, definitely. I mean, look at all the awards it won. It was just an amazing game. And after that, I th anything after that, I really didn't care for that much anyway. But anyway, so yeah, like I said, there are just so many great computer games out there that I could actually run a whole channel on just PC. I mean, on just computer games. Long I keep saying PC, but a a Apple IIe had some great games. Uh, Atari ST had a whole bunch of great games. Commodore 64, that was pretty much a gaming computer. And then, you know, PC had... So, I mean, yeah, there, there's a lot to come. And, I mean, a lot of them. And so, yeah, be ready because they're coming. All right, this question. The most underrated games. Okay, now PC. I think the most underrated PC game of all time has to be Streets of SimCity. I had so much fun playing that game. I mean, I love SimCity 2000, and just to be able to drive in the streets of a city that you created, that you spent weeks and even months on end, and you're able to drive down those streets is just, was just a lot of fun. And I think people didn't give it a chance because they didn't know about, you know, the special customizable missions where, you know, you drove around, you were a smuggler. Uh, and then you had the police coming after you and other gangsters and you could adjust the radio and there were just some great I, I actually believe it or not I actually uh, ripped the CD and took the music and some of the commercials off and I still listen to it I mean there was there was some just amazing songs uh, some of them are actually fo uh, featured in the intros and outros of my videos so I I really think street uh, people really missed the bus on streets of some city um, as far as uh, NES, I would say Kabuki Quantum Fighter has to be a very underrated game. Uh, it just it's just wacky. I mean, you know, your your special weapon is you're whipping your hair at the guys. It's just, it's, who thought that game up, you know? And not only that, I mean, but it's very uh, it's just it's real it's hard, but yet it's fun. You know, it's not hard like Battletoads, you know, or that original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game or Fester's Quest, you know, those, those that's just too damn hard. But, I mean, it was hard, but yet at the same time, it's just a lot of fun. So, um, I still haven't beat the game yet. I've been trying for years, and I still haven't beaten it. So, um, I definitely have to say that's one of the most underrated games for the NES. Alright, are there any Easter eggs in your videos? Kind of, there's a lot of cultural references I think some people don't quite get. Uh, now, some people do, because uh, gamers, you know, we kind of catch stuff that, you know, we can uh, other gamers will catch stuff, like my wife will watch them sometimes, and she doesn't quite, you know, get it. Um, and But then, you know, I explain it to her, and then, you know, but I mean, it's just gaming references, you know, that she doesn't quite get, because she's not a big gamer. Um, but like, for instance, each of the characters, like, uh, he's... Name, his name is Red the Fox. I originally called him Red Fox because you know Red Fox is one of my he childhood and lifelong heroes. I loved Sanford and Son. I loved his stand up. That's why, like when I introduced him, he said, "Yeah, well, you want me to say stuff like you big dummy, you know?" But also, but instead of doing that, which would be just such a carbon copy, I make make him, you know. And foxes are my second favorite animal. So, and then I. I made him, you know, Canadian. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, I got this uh, voice here. But, I mean, I'm not, I don't have to be Canadian. I could be from Upper Peninsula, Michigan, or even uh, South Dakota. Right. So, um, you know, that's where he came from. Uh, Alligator, 
comes from you know Algonquin uh, Eugene Gator was inspired by uh, Uncle Alligator, the uh, mascot for Rax Restaurants, a uh, place I used to go to as a kid, which I think there's only a few of those left. I mean, there were quite a few of them all over Northwest Indiana. Now they're gone. Um, and also the Louisiana Chef. You know, I just really enjoyed watching that show. <laughs> it was just lots of fun. Because, you know, like the Louisiana Chef, he would, like, say stuff like, Oh, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put some wine in there by gumbo. That there is some good stuff, I tell you what. And, you know, and then, of course, he'd be put wine in everything. Like, I right, put a little more wine in there. And put a little more wine in there. You know what? Just put the whole bottle of wine in there. And then when we done, we're going to have some wine with our dinner. So, you know, that's kind of where I get that idea from him. For him, uh, Humphrey, uh, the wolf, you know, wolves are my all-time favorite animal. I mean, you can see I got, I don't know if you can see it. I got a, uh, you know, there I can see I have a tattoo of a wolf. You know, wolves are definitely my favorite animal. So I had to get a wolf, uh, a wolf uh, puppet. And um, I get the name Humphrey from one of my favorite shows, uh, he was one one of the detectives on Death in Paradise, the show with uh, Sarah Martins. You know, mm, Sarah Martins. Hey, focus. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so that's where I get the name Humphrey. That was my favorite detective that was on that show at one time. Um, uh, Larry is interesting. I get Larry. I, when you notice when he introduces himself, he says, "Hi, I'm Larry. Larry the Lion." Now I got that as a nod or a tribute to Al Lowe. Uh, a video game programmer that worked for Sierra Online. He created the Leisure Suit Larry series, which we will not focus, we will not profile on this channel. But, um, and the character on the game was named Larry Laffer. And when he would introduce himself, he always said, Hi, I'm Larry, <laughs> Larry Laffer. So it's kind of a nod to, you know, Al Lowe, uh, not only a video game programmer, a uh, heck of a musician, a songwriter, and just an overall great guy. So, like I said, yeah, there's little little nudges and little things here and there throughout my chant, my uh, chant, my uh, episodes that you know some people get, and some some of them are inside jokes of my own. So, yeah, there's little, there's a lot of little things like that, you know, spread throughout the episodes. All right, question number seventeen: Games that took you the longest to beat. Okay, that's easy. Death in the Caribbean. I already said that earlier. That game took me almost 30 years to beat. It's a great game, though. It still holds up, and I, I dare say there's probably very few people that are, even to this day, that are going to be able to beat it without cheating. So, All right, games you've never beaten. Okay, that would be, uh, like I said, Kabuki Quantum Fighter. I never beat that. Uh, I never beat the NES. A lot of NES games. I never beat... Um, that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game. Actually, I don't think it is beatable, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I never beat Castlevania. I came close, yeah, to that. That that was just so frustrating. I never beat Ninja Gaiden. Um, yeah, a lot of NES games. That def and I never beat Fester's Quest. So, yeah, there's quite a few NES games I never beat. And then some of them I just said, all right, you know what? I'm never going to beat this, so forget it. So... Next one, how long will the channel go on until I get tired of it and I'm having a blast? So I have episodes planned well into the hundreds. So, I mean, I just like I said, I keep discovering new games all the time. Uh, people make some suggestions. And again, if you have a, a specific game you'd like to see me uh, review and talk about, discuss, let me know in the comment section or direct message me because I love, you know, some of the suggestions that have came in so far, you know, um, Randall Fox twice, he suggested uh, mail order only games and trackball games. Uh, my wife suggested uh, the Christian games in part two and uh, Star Trek. So, I mean, if anybody has any games um, or a genre of games, you know, that you would like to see me uh, talk about, let me know. And I will try to get to it. And matter of fact, I'll make it a point to get to it. So, um, you know, I, like I said, I've been having a blast doing this. It's really been nostalgic for me. And I've really enjoyed, you know, sharing stories with a lot of the, I've met a lot of really cool people. 
uh, not you know just the subscribers here, but also I met some really cool people on the Atari Age forums. I mean, there's some great people on there, the other classic gamers that we just love video games and we just love Atari. And this is a big shout out to them. So it's been great meeting you guys. Um, you know, and a lot of them have given me some constructive criticism. Like for instance, when I did Yar's Revenge, I put the apostrophe before the before the S, not after it, and I got razzed by quite a few people about that. So, yeah. But anyway, and like I said, I really appreciate all the support, all the emails, all the texts, all the comments, suggestions. Thank you very much. You know, I it really means a lot to me. Final question: Other channels? Uh, yes, there are going to be some other channels coming up. Uh, for those of you that really love the puppets and you know would like to see them do stuff other than just video games, I am actually working on a side channel where it's just going to be me and the puppets doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So that's going to be coming soon. I'll have details on here on this on this channel. Let you know the other channel. Plus, I've got. I'm going to do a channel of me reading some of my my books. As many of you may or may not know, I am a published writer. I've actually independently published 15 books. Uh, you can get, you, if you're interested, head over to Amazon and put my name in and you can find them there. Many of them, or just about all of them, are in ebook format and in print. Um, then I'm also going to resurrect an old channel I did many years ago when I discussed like pets and animals and stuff like that. Uh, many of you also are aware that I have a podcast uh, where Red and I discuss my favorite sport, curling. Uh, it's called Curling with Anthony and Red. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below and you can check that out. You know, So I got a lot of projects going on. I still got some books that I'm working on. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting at least two more books out by the end of the year. Um, so yeah, I got a lot going on. Uh, besides that, being a husband and a father and working, so I keep I keep very busy. So, oh yeah, you sure do. Yeah. So anyway, well, that brings us to the end of uh, this special episode for all the fans, friends, and subscribers. Uh, the FAQ. If you got any other questions, uh, don't forget to. I mean, please let me know uh, in the comments section below. Direct message me. You know, go to the Facebook page, message me there, um, and I'll be glad to answer. Like I said, I'll probably do another FAQ if I get more uh, questions coming up. So, again, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for the positive feedback, the views, and for sharing my love of sharing uh, your love of classic video games with me. So, again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. Um, so that concludes this episode and again I hope to see you all very soon uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please do encourage your friends and family to come check out the page and subscribe to ask them to subscribe as I'm trying to get up to 50 subscribers um, and that about wraps it up you got anything to add nope not really all right everyone well thank you for stopping by and I will see you in the next video until then have a great day goodbye goodbye <laughs>